Hi, I'm Arpita Banerjee and over this series on practical computation biology, I'll be discussing predictive techniques using artificial intelligence methods. Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this particular series, I'll be talking about computational biology. Unlike bioinformatics, where I showed you how to use software to solve biological problems, I'll specifically deal with computations and coding. I will begin with a classification problem, the solution of which will be discussed using k nearest never method. I'm thankful to two professors of Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, who allowed me to audit their classes in the time frame of August to October 2019. And I'm also thankful to a particular student who used to provide me moral support uh, when I was showing her the codes for proofreading. What is classification? Let's say I have three boxes here, which are filled with three differently colored balls or spheres. And these are classified into three separate classes, A, B, C, as per the colors. Now, if I ask you, if you look at the sphere on top, if I ask you to which class does this particular sphere belong to, you would immediately say class A, right? Next, if I ask you uh, to which class does this ball on top belong to, you would immediately say that it belongs to class C based on the color. So that was easy, right? Now, if you look at this particular data set, which I have over here, there are a series of numbers and you can see on the right that we have certain classes like iris citosa, iris versicolor, and if I go further down, I have iris virginica. The numbers are attribute information of iris flowers. So the data set which I just showed you has been taken from UCI machine learning repository. And the comma separated numbers are sepal length in centimeter, sepal width in centimeter, petal length in centimeter, and petal width in centimeter. So each of these instances or each of these lines have four attributes. Now from this data set, if I just randomly extract out an instance and uh, from which the class is missing, so you just have the numbers to look at, the attributes to look at. Will you be able to tell me whether it belongs to, you know, Setosa or Versicolor or Virginica? Um, it's not going to be that easy, right? Um, not as easy as the colored balls example I showed you earlier. So in order to classify, there would be calculations, comparative calculations based on these numbers. And there would be coding involved to make the calculations easier. So this is a possible scenario where um, you have the attributes, but you don't have the class label. So just by looking at these numbers, it won't be easy for you to say whether it belongs to Setosa or Versicolor or Virginica. Okay, so we will be using K nearest never method for our classification problem here. We will calculate the Euclidean distance between each of the training set instance and the test set instance using all the four attributes. After all such calculations where all of the training set instances are going to be involved, we will pick the nearest neighbors, that is the instances from the training set that are closest to the test set in terms of Euclidean distance. And we will pick seven such instances. That is why this method is known as K nearest neighbor method. This is the mathematical formula for calculating the Euclidean distance between two points and the points here are P and Q and the way the distance is calculated is uh, the coordinates are subtracted and then it is raised to the power of 2 and eventually you sum up all those squared numbers and then you do a root over of the entire summed up stuff. 
So in our case, P and Q, the two separate points will be the test set instance and one training set instance. The coordinates will be the attributes, the four attributes. So each of the attributes will be subtracted one on one and uh, after subtracting they will be squared they will be summed so there would be since we are talking about four attributes four such squared numbers are going to be summed up and eventually a root over of it will yield us the distance between the test set instance and the training set instance So the Euclidean distance between the test set instance, one test set instance will be calculated against all of the training set instances. Uh, what you see on the right is the test set instance and on the left I have a snapshot of the entire training set. So the way the algorithm is going to work is I'm going to calculate the Euclidean distance. Actually, I will make the computer to calculate um, the Euclidean distance between the test set instance and one training set instance. The one, uh, let's say just for example, the one which you see over here underlined in red. And then I move on to the next one here again, which is underlined in red. So this way I go on calculating all the distances between the training set instances and the test set instance which would actually translate to how many numbers whatever numbers you have in the training set and then the least of the distance would give me an indication towards the class of my test set instance. In this case however I will be talking about seven such numbers or seven such instances so what you see over here is the calculated euclidean distance uh, on the left within this red box and i have on the right the training set instances which are being of the closest distance to the test set okay and as you can see it's very clear iris virginica is appearing five times out of the seven this is the prediction that iris virginica um, is the class of the test set. So that was the theory part. I tried to dump it down as much as possible and now I'm going to proceed to the coding part where I'll explain all the lines of my code. It took me about three weeks to write this code so this is not exactly meant for beginners but I hope this would be useful to students who have some base in Python and who are keen on learning artificial intelligence methods. Let's begin. My training dataset is named iris.data2 and my test dataset is named test.data. Okay, so the first line of the code is import math. We are importing a module called math because we will be performing uh, mathematical operations here. Next, G is being used as a handle to open iris.data2 file. Lines 1 is storing whatever is being read from iris.data2 and then we have a very similar operation on test.data where f opens the file and lines 2 writes a list out of the lines that are being read from test.data i have some variables set to initially zero such as dist wxyz and there are some empty lists and dictionaries here, as you can see. So um, these will come in handy, as we will see later down in the code. Going to the training set, there it is, the training set. And each, each of this line is an instance over here. And you have these attributes, 5.1, 3.5, 1.4, 0.2. So going back to the code. For i in lines 1, a is equal float i and then you have this uh, colon 3 within third bracket. What it does is it is extracting the first attribute here. So if the first line is um, this one, then the first attribute 5.1, 5.1 is being extracted. Next, coming to b. 
with the help of this slicing, I'm extracting the attributes. So B extracts this one over here, 3.5. And then C, which is extracting 1.4. And then you have D, which is extracting 0 0.2. Okay. So all these attributes are being extracted. Once you're done with line one, next comes line two. And then A, B, C, D, everything is getting overwritten with the attributes of the second line. Okay, so then we have for J in lines two, which is a reading out the line in test.data. So here is what I have in test.data. And if you notice, we have a nested loop here. When the test.data line is being read, we are extracting the attributes in PQRS. And then here comes the subtraction part where the subtracted value is being stored in WXYZ where W, X, Y, Z had been set to initially zero. So if you notice here, W, X, Y, Z had been set to initially zero. And now we have uh, the subtracted values, which will be used to calculate the distance. And um, this was also set to initially zero. And what we are doing next after we have the subtracted values is, in this, we are, um, squaring the numbers, the subtracted values, right? So what you see over here, um, W star W is essentially squaring the subtracted value. And this expression around comma 2 encompassing the squared values is meant to round off the values to two decimal places. Say if I have something like x.0123 then that would get reduced to x.01. Okay and then we have this m dot append i and then with the help of slicing I'm trying to say that extract everything from I except for the last character, which is the new line character. So remember, we started off with an empty list M. So if I go back here, see, I have M as an empty list, and then I'm appending whatever I'm getting from I. This particular code is required to show the training set lines you know which are being of the nearest distance to the test set so in order to get these lines from the training set just to you know specify the particular instances which are being the closest hits in terms of distance to the test set sqr which was set initially as an empty list before there is now within this loop appending the root over of whatever we got from test mac.sqr t operation is essentially doing a root over of the entire thing what we got in test and this round comma to operation as i mentioned earlier is essentially trimming off the value to two decimal places. If you see at the end of the loop, I have this particular line of code where I'm telling the computer that if you find such zeros at the end of my training data set, which is iris.data2, the last line here is a string of zeros. So I'm telling why am I code to the computer that if you hit a string of zeros, then what you have to do is in value list, you store whatever items were there in M. Similarly, in key list, store all the items of calculated Euclidean distance, store SQR items. So uh, value list is out of the list that was storing the lines from the training data set. 
and uh, the minus one slicing which is being used here essentially discards the zero the line which has all the zeros okay and similarly key list stores the distance the euclidean distance the calculated euclidean distance barring the last character which in this case would be uh, whatever rubbish you got from you know calculating with the zeros and uh, ultimately mapping is a dictionary which is created out of zipping the key list and the value list together next we have this x uh, this capital x holding the keys of the dictionary mapping so what do we have as keys so if you if you take a look here key list actually was storing the calculated distance this is the calculated distance right the euclidean distance so x is holding the keys and y is sorting them so when you sort something when you sort numerical values it gets sorted in ascending order so in this case the least distance would come first setting the scale initially as zero we are running a loop of y y is sorted x remember the distance are sorted in ascending order so running that loop when i print l so i get the least distance first followed by that particular instance of the training set which is showing the least distance with the test set and with each of the iteration k is getting an added value of 1 and eventually after k turns 7 so essentially after 7 such least distances I am making the program to break out of the loop KNN. if I run the code there is my output and you see the distances on the left you see the distances on the left and um, that training set instances which are the closest match to the test set appears on the right with their labels on the farthest right so as you can see iris virginica appears the most the conclusion would be that the test set has the attributes of iris virginica so the code here is exactly as I wrote and exactly as I showed, you know, for proofreading way back in September 2019. But I'd like to mention a few details um, just to avoid confusions. If you notice, I have my training data set as iris.data2 it is not exactly the iris.data file that you can download from the uci machine learning repository so the difference between that data file and my data my training data set is just a few missing lines so what i was doing at that point of time was i was extracting just cutting out randomly one or two lines from the training set to make my test set and um, yeah I just did cut and paste it was not even copy paste so that's the reason two or three instances in iris.data is missing in iris.data too the code is going to work on iris.data that's not going to be a problem also iris.data too had a string of zeros at the end for my code to work as I mentioned earlier next if you notice I have a nested loop here so for J in lines 2 is actually running within for I in lines 1 it's running within so this one over here is running within this loop for I in lines 1 every time one of the training set instance is being read and this one over here is being compared to this test set 6.5. This is just an example. So this one over here is being compared to this, you know, one instance of training set. And then moving on to the next one. 
So in order to compare, you know, one instance of the training set with that of uh, the test set, it has to be a nested loop, you know, if you get the logic. And um, here, if you notice that in this, I have the squared numbers of the subtracted values, right? And then SQR dot is a list where it is taking in the root over of this. So it should have actually come right after this. I mean, at least for the sake of readability. However, it doesn't affect the output of the code per se. So let's just see if I go and change the order of these lines of code, you will see that it doesn't make any difference. You are getting the same output as before. Test directory. So in the test directory, I have this iris.data2 as my training uh, set file and test.data as my test uh, file. And here is my code gain and my code uh, do.py. I'm going to just make some changes as I mentioned earlier. So, okay so let me just get this one out of here edit copy and let me just put it right after this let's put it right after this let me just fix the indentation okay and i don't need it over here all again i mean that would be just let me just delete this so what i did essentially was i just put the sqr dot append line of code right after this and save out i'll just run it there we have the same output as before this is just to show you you know how the code works if you make a few changes it's going to it's not going to make any difference if you know what you're doing and uh, coming to this part of the code where i'm required to uh, specify that when you find zero at the end then you start writing these lists value list and key list so as you remember i had this string of zeros right at the end of my training data set file so I was told that this is not very efficient um, since, you know, you have to just write a string of zeros. But my training data set remains the same. So and for a specific training data set, I am writing this code. This entire code is based on a particular training data set because the input format and everything is being read from this particular data set iris.data now if i just change the data set altogether let's say i'm not dealing with iris.data i'm dealing with some other data file then if you can understand you have to just rewrite the code all over again you have to rewrite the code because in um, the other training data set there may be like few attributes and the attributes may not be arranged in a way it is arranged in this particular data set one example is that um, the the extraction part the extraction part which is uh, written like this is going to change the slicing is going to change so every time the training data set gets changed you have to or i have to rewrite the code altogether so compared to that, putting a string of zeros at the end of the training data set is actually not much of a word. Thank you very much. I intend to make a videos on clustering and neural networks soon, as soon as I can. Stay tuned until then.